So what are some quick ways that people could downregulate the amount of serotonin in their body? So I want to talk, let's do a couple supplement recommendations and then also a, uh, maybe some foods, right? Or dietary habits. Yeah. Supplement wise, theanine has been shown to lower serotonin levels in the body. Mm -hmm. uh, we have theanine here in our Miracle Morning supplement. So you can try that out. Mm -hmm. It's also good if you just want a good focus and kick in the morning. Vitamin uh, B3 is niacinamide, mm -hmm. which we have in thyroid mm -hmm. for a reason, you know, that'll help. Um, I believe B6 also helps a lot for lowering serotonin, mm -hmm. which if you read that book, uh, Nutrient Power, B6 is involved in pretty much every yeah, single. it's insane. Um, and and uh, folate, mm -hmm. B9. So, um, I would, I would definitely take those. B vitamins are extremely important. A lot of people are very deficient in them. Mm -hmm. uh, and they manifest, those deficiencies typically manifest as some sort of mental disorder mm -hmm. uh, in some way. Yeah. I do know that activated charcoal can be an yeah. antibacterial, so you can get rid of some of that endotoxin in the gut. Yeah. Um, it's been shown to lower serotonin. Yeah. Uh, branch chain amino acids also have. Yes, that's what yeah. I was about to say. Yeah. yeah, they can displace tryptophan yep. in a lot of cases. Yeah, because if you think about this whole whole like uh, biological environment, really what you're looking at is tryptophan, which mm -hmm. is amino acid. Uh, you're looking at serotonin, which tryptophan can convert into, mm -hmm. and then you're looking at other another supplement you should avoid that is um, melatonin, five HTP, and five well. HTP. Yeah, um, supplements to avoid, I would say, tryptophan, five HTP, melatonin. Potentially also something like St. John's wort, mm -hmm. um, which people use for, you know, I remember that actually got super popular when I was a kid too. Uh, people are, were using it for anxiety and depression mm -hmm. because of it kind of rode along the uh, marketing with the um, uh, serotonin mm. reuptake inhibitors. Interesting. That's used as a nootropic too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's also, it's been shown to increase serotonin levels. So I would avoid it uh, if you're trying to lower your serotonin levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of, oh, also just uh, providing a more favorable amino acid balance really in the body from from things that aren't muscle meats, mm -hmm. because we typically tend to eat a lot of muscle meats mm -hmm. in our culturally, you know, normal diets, like chicken breasts and, you know, ground beef or whatever. So, which ruminants typically don't have very much tryptophan in them. Mm -hmm. uh, not like, nearly as high. Yeah. Yeah. As poultry. Poultry has a higher mm -hmm. amount. So mm -hmm. I would, I wouldn't eat as much poultry, but... Also, uh, I've seen that like only about 10% of dietary tryptophan is actually converted into anything in mm -hmm. the body uh, and into serotonin. So it's not like a mat, unless you're just only eating chicken all the time, like I wouldn't really worry about that. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting tidbit is that like, so one of the reasons that turkey makes you tired after you eat it, like after a big Thanksgiving meal is because of the tryptophan content in the yeah. turkey increases serotonin. And it's interesting because a lot of these animals that go into hibernation their serotonin levels yeah. shoot up, their metabolic rate goes down. And the reason that it goes down is because if it stayed high, they'd burn through all of their energy stores very quickly and starve to death during their hibernated state. Yeah, the hibernation studies are really cool mm -hmm. on uh, animal hibernation and, yeah. and tryptophan, serotonin, and everything. Mm -hmm. And like the theories about how stress plays a role in their hibernation mm -hmm. because they stop being able to find food. Yeah. That's why they start hoarding food so early mm -hmm. like in the summer. Mm -hmm. and they'll they'll be hoarding all this food and their stress starts to increase through the fall in the winter as it gets colder and there's less food available mm -hmm. uh so the stress hormones are super super high and i wonder yeah like oh that's probably a chicken and egg thing like how did that even start happening like maybe it's just certain species um almost had to do that mm -hmm. uh cyclically yeah i don't know it, it's very fascinating because like uh bears will come out of hibernation as full-blown type 2 diabetics yeah. and then they just eat a shitload of honey to pull themselves out of that diabetic state yep. and that's the exact opposite of what most people <laughs> yeah think is going on so it's kind of interesting yeah people they would say the sugar is going to cause diabetes it's mm -hmm. like no no they're diabetic not from sugar yeah but because they haven't been eating any sugar mm -hmm. and they've been uh in a high serotonin state mm -hmm. essentially in high stress hormone state yeah which has induced this sleep this like coma sleep you know mm -hmm. that they do mm -hmm. um so to get out of it they have to eat sugar mm -hmm. Very counterintuitive, yeah. but well, to the, to the average thinker, right? Mm -hmm. Or conventional thought, but really it does make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, 
In terms of foods, though, I would also say, like we mentioned earlier, avoiding PUFA. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to convert more tryptophan into serotonin mm -hmm. in the body. I would say any kind of phytoestrogen, typically, like soy. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say good endotoxin fighting foods, like a good raw carrot every single day, yeah. some raw bam or cooked bamboo shoots, um, some well-cooked mushrooms, things like that. It's going to be very beneficial. Yeah. For the most part, um, just sticking straight up to thermo diet guidelines mm -hmm. will help you out. Yeah. Just eliminate the PUFA. Um, if you're super high in serotonin, you, in terms of fruits, you probably want to avoid uh, eating a lot of bananas and pineapple. Mm -hmm. That'd be the one thing. Kiwi as well. Key, okay, key. Yeah. So, so those three, if you're really high, if you're not high in serotonin, I wouldn't really worry about it, but unless you're doing something crazy, like some of these people eat like 30 bananas a day or whatever they do. <laughs> um, I wouldn't do that. That's kind of dumb. Um, but, you know, just be cognizant of that those three fruits tend to elicit a serotonergic reaction in high quantities. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, eating a banana is not gonna do anything to you, but if you're already like super sensitive to having high serotonin and, and you are working to lower it, uh, you don't need to eat those fruits. Mm -hmm. you choose other ones. Um, yeah, and then I would also like focus on on um, things like bone broth, uh, getting collagen, mm -hmm. getting a more favorable amino acid profile because that'll help kind of balance out stuff. Like collagen has basically no tryptophan in it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very high in protective amino acids that are going to help to uh, influ positively influence your your um, protective hormones in the body mm -hmm. and uh, recovery, good sleep, all that sort of thing. Yeah, I would say if you're under 25, then you're I wouldn't go over a third of your protein intake coming solely from collagen and gelatin, though, because you do need uh, that complete amino acid profile in order to allow for tissue creation and things like that whenever you're still. Um, yeah. So still eat food. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But get some grass fed beef or something. Yeah, yeah. definitely.